Now, the Minister of Public Utilities, Marvin Gonzalez, joins us this morning to talk about a suspected water racket at the Water and Sewerage Authority of Wasa. And some good news. The Tobago team was commended for its outstanding performance during the Easter festivities on the sister island. So now we go to Mr. Gonzalez. Minister, good morning. Good morning, Kimberly. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. Good morning, Rockers. Good morning to you. <laughs> Beautiful, no morning show team. You know, it's always a pleasure to be here. Of course. Listen, they're just <laughs> waiting by the phone lines. Eh? This interview is like just time. They are waiting by the phone lines because I know I'm, that we're going to talk to you after. Thankfully, I'm in the studio. So if they look to, um, to get some kind of object to throw at me, I'm, I'm <laughs> in the safe, safe comfort. At least you're safe for now. <laughs> but Minister, I mean, I have to ask you. Mm -hmm. We heard the news and I, I remember the, the CEO of WASA also commented on it as, as well. The uh, but the chairman commented yeah. on it as well. What a truck racketeering going on but in terms of um they said that there was it seemed as if a water truck racket is going on mm -hmm. where they actually they cut off the supply of water at wasa so that maybe the water truck people can get more i mean what is this that's happening that is going on for quite a long time in trinidad and tobago and i have always commented that where there appears to be dysfunction somebody's making money out of it mm -hmm. and there are people who are invested in this function in Trinidad and Tobago, not only in the Water and Sewage Authority, in the utility sector, but all over Trinidad and Tobago. I worked at the Ministry of Works and Transport as head of the legal department, and I worked and collaborated closely with the Permanent Secretary on the transformation of the licensing authority. And I can tell you what we inherited there and the strategies and the initiatives that we undertook for a period of time to bring about transformation at the licensing authority, the level of dysfunction and corruption that existed there it was is mind-boggling. So Trinidad and Tobago is a very corrupt society. And um, there are a lot of people who just wanted to remain like that because they make money. It, 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 it protects their investment in whatever um, corrupt activities that they're involved in. And they would resist any attempt to bring about transformation that will help um, improve the levels of service to, to, to customers and to citizens and what have you. So when I raise the issue with respect to water truck and water trucking in Wasa, it's just an, another example of the level of corruption um, that exists and that are so pervasive in Trinidad and Tobago. And I did not raise it because I did not have the evidence. I raised it because I had my own personal experiences. Because as Minister of Public Utilities, from time to time, um, complaints would reach my desk, and I would prefer to go out and investigate myself, talk to the residents, talk to the, the, the communities and the citizens, and they would account to me what has been going on. And upon further investigation, you would realize that there was absolutely no reason for Community A, Community B, or Community C not to have water. The booster station was working. Water was being sent. There was no disruption to your pipeline network. But what was actually happening or thriving was a water trucking, um, illegal water trucking um, racket in, in that particular community. So I don't want to name the communities um, at this point in time. I don't think it would be wise of me to do that. But I can tell you I visited three or five communities based on reports that came to me, even from the Prime Minister. In his constituency where he drew to my attention a community that was enjoying 24-7 water was not having water. And um, I took some senior personnel from Wasa and I journeyed to the community and I heard directly from the residents who showed me bills where they paid for water trucking services and you would know that once you are a legitimate Wasa customer and for one reason or the other the authority cannot provide you with water you are entitled to a free truck borne supply of water but yet still, in some of those communities, you have bills where the residents have been paying private water trucking companies and sometimes companies that are contracted by the authority for their for water trucking services. And you have to ask yourself, sometimes citizens are forced in this position because you're talking about water. You need water to bathe, you need water to shower your kids, you need water to cook and to wash your clothes. And when you are put in this unfortunate position, if you have to fork out $600 or $800 from your pocket, if you want, you can afford it. You will do so because it is water you're talking about. Unfortunately, as well, um, a number of these uh, communities or citizens, they would make requests um, through the, the app and the, the call center. And it will take weeks for 
for there to be a response from the authority. So, so, mm -hmm. so, but I, so I have a, a question. So you'll be talking about people who they're making the request through the app. It's taking long. You're talking about people also, um, their water is being shut off and so they have to go to the water trucking system. Yes. Are we then saying that there are corrupt people in Oasa who are doing these things, who are cutting off the supply, who are working with the, the water trucking company oh, and that sort of thing? Oh, certainly. When I, when I read it, I did not go into details, but I said, and the chairman also alluded strongly because he first came out and made the statement and the media reached out to me and asked me if I knew anything about it and I said yes um, because these are the things that people are con and the citizens would have reported and they would have showed us bills where they're paid and what have you. Now <clears throat> what tend to happen is that what I notice is that uh, communities where people are middle class or upper middle class um, they they, they tend to be the targets for, for the racket because they are the ones who will not wait for a week to be, de um, to be delivered a truck one supply of water from the authority. They will not normally um, continue to call the call center to request a truck one supply when you can call a private operator who will deliver a truck one supply for you in less, in less than an hour. These people will not go to social media, unfortunately. They will not call the media or, or complain. They need water, they don't have water for one reason or the other, and oftentimes they are referred to certain service providers for the water. And they are referred to those service providers, unfortunately, by workers of the authority. And, and that is what happens. So whenever there, there is no water to that particular community, the community group chat will become very active and they will call their water truck service provider to provide the water. Let me give you a case in point. I never, I never spoke to Gregory Aboud, which is the, 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 the president of, Duma. of, the, of Duma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, I got up one morning and I read in this me that there are certain segments of downtown Port of Spain um, was without water and 30-something um, businesses were purchasing water for over 10 weeks. I called the CEO, wasn't aware. I called the director of operation, she was not aware. The chairman was not aware. And I asked myself, how, how can that be possible? It is possible because your system is so manual where people can go out of water for a protracted or prolonged period of time and never raise any issue with the authority or perhaps tried on numerous occasions unsuccessfully to raise the issue with the authority and they're not successful and then they have to resort to paying large sums of money to private water truck operators to get water. So this existed for 10 weeks, and I'm hearing that thousands of dollars were paid by, these, by the affected businesses to the private water truck operators for the 10 weeks that the businesses were without water. The normal policy is that if you are a WASA customer, and for one reason or the other, there's a disruption to the network, that prevents the authority from providing you with water, you are entitled to a free truck bond supply until whatever is the issue is rectified. Mm -hmm. On this occasion, these people, as an example, so these business owners paid thousands of dollars in water truck services for 10 weeks. Until such time the issue was raised by DOMA, the issue was resolved in one night. Right. And the, 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 the water supply was returned to the affected community no, by the next in day. that instance, the water was supplied, right? But we are seeing an existing um, issue at the Water and Storage Authority, which mm -hmm. is that there seems to be a water truck racketeering where they are stopping the pipes. We have um, WASA workers also involved. You have the private contractors involved, depending based on your investigation. Yeah. What is the solution? What is the solution to this? The solution is that this manual form of operation that WASA has grown accustomed to since over 10, 20, 30 years. This has allowed the manipulation of its system and the proliferation of corrupt practices, in this case, water trucking, where some of these operators can go to a fire hydrant because, again, most of those water truck companies, they deliver truck one supply with a WASA worker on that truck. And you say that they're getting the water from a standpipe. And they, no, from a, either, and they confirmed 
They, I did not say it. They confirm. They confirm that the water that they're getting mm -hmm. is from the authority, right. not necessarily an approved water trucking bay, but from standpipes, and I can also tell you from fire hydrants, because they have access to these um, infrastructure mm -hmm. where they can go illegally open a fire hydrant, fill their truck, and sell the water to the customers. And I was also very shocked that when the express reporter reached out to some of these operators, they say, well, we, we are not um, selling the water. It, we're yes, selling it, our transport. We, we're selling our transport. <laughs> yes. I, I was amazed. And I was also amazed when the, the express reporter reached out to some customers who said that when they contacted the authority, some of the workers would refer to them, refer the private operators, and they will tell them that if you want your supply within a certain period of time, you have to pay X sum of money. So I did not come <laughs> out with all our details. The chairman did not come out of all, all, with, with all our details. All we said was that we are aware yes. of the racketeering and what we are doing to prevent and to, um, to reduce the, um, the opportunities that are available for citizens to be victims of this corrupt and pervasive practice so within myself, the authority. Go back to that. So you mentioned there's a manual system. So is it that we're going to see something digital where it's going to be online now and maybe um, more difficult for workers in Wasa to sort of maintain that sort right. of corruption? So the first thing is that if you have a disruption in a community, a community doesn't have water for one reason or the other, if the valve was deliberately shut off, a dysfunctional valve or whatever issue on the network, we are going to be launching uh, an app in, in, the, in the middle of the month of May, and that app would be able to allow customers to have a more direct relation with the authority. We are going to be training some a team and staff members who will be interfacing and operating that new application software right. that is going to be launched, a new um, um, office where the, the network is going to be uh, an operation office, a central a centralized operations office where the network is going to be visualized and it is going to be monitored on a 24-7 basis. The, the, the first two components of that app, which we are brought to launch in the month of May, is for citizens to report leaks on the system, to report leaks and to be able to track and monitor the, 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 the repair of that leak up to road restoration right. as the first component. And the second component is water trucking <coughs> services, mm -hmm. where for one reason or the other, if there's an, for one reason or the other, you are unable to get water from the network, from the authority, you can make that request by the use of this application and you can track and you can monitor that request until you get a delivery of your truck one supply because when citizens call, that's the, the pervasive um, complaints that we hear that when they call the, um, the, the call center, they are unable or they are placed in a digital queue where they have to wait for 15 or 20 minutes. And a number of citizens, a number of calls drop because citizens simply cannot wait mm -hmm. for 20 or 30 minutes for their calls to be um, entertained or accepted. And when they are finally accepted, they are told, well, you have to wait one week or two weeks. So I want to put a pin in that only because I know you're going to be joining us in the next segment. Mm -hmm. But I want us to end on a good note. Tell us about Tobago. Well, T Tobago <coughs> had a very successful Easter weekend. I am very proud of the, the team um, at Tobago, led by uh, Mr. Brian Williams, because I visited Tobago on a number of occasions. A couple months ago, I visited. We did a number of projects under the Community Water Improvement Program. You know, it's something that I boast yes. about, Community yes. Water Improvement Program, where we identify some vulnerable areas that are not having a, a, a consistent supply of water. And we executed four or five projects under the Community Water Improvement Program, including a booster station at Chauvin Road to boost and improve pressures in southwest Tobago, that is Kena and Bonacord, um, Crown Point, and what have you. A number of these communities there, located there, mm -hmm. you have guest houses, and when people visit Tobago, they would normally um, stay within that area. The transient population around Easter time is about 70,000 citizens mm -hmm. moving from Trinidad to Tobago, which obviously is going to put some kind of pressure yeah. on your network. Every year you would hear complaints from Southwest Tobago. 
And on this occasion, because of the infrastructure that we laid down and some of the initiatives that we pursued under the Community Water Improvement Program, we had no complaints for water. And talking about water trucks, last year we had 140 requests for water trucks all across Trinidad and Tobago, including Southwest. And this year, all we had was about 20 or 30 truck requests for truck one supply from private citizens who, for one reason or the other, their supply dwindled and they requested um, a truck one supply. And I'm going to pause you right mm. here, Minister, because I know that we have to go to break, but you will be joining us. <laughs> and so just to uh, prompt our uh, viewers as well, remember the Minister of Public Utilities, Mr. Marvin Gonzalez, is here with us. He is going to be with us for the next segment. And guess what? You can call him. Our phone lines are going to be open when we come back. 622-4010. Stay by your phone lines because you have an opportunity to talk to the Minister of Public Utilities, Mr. Marvin Gonzalez. But for now, we're going to take a break and be right back. Stay with us. Just about 14 minutes after the hour of 6 o'clock, welcome back to the Now Morning Show. And we have the Minister of Public Utilities, Mr. Marvin Gonzalez, who is joining us in studio this morning. And we're going to open up the phone lines because we want to hear from you. The Minister is here. He's ready to hear your concerns. He's ready to hear your issues. Even if you have some good news for us, or maybe you can also call and share that as well. Our numbers are 622 4010. Our Minister, before we get the first lines, because I know people are standing by, yes. remind us again, we will be ended the conversation on Tobago. Tobago. Just tell us again uh, some of the work that they did over the Easter period. So we identified some vulnerable areas and um, under the Community Water Improvement Program, our target would be communities that are unserved and underserved. Southwest Tobago suffered for years um, because that is where most of your as they would call it, their transient population. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about <coughs> 70,000 citizens, additional citizens, going in a particular location, it puts an additional burden on your utilities. And I'm going to pause you one second, yeah. Minister, because I do believe we have Tuna Puna on the line. Tuna Puna, good morning. Good morning. Hi, Tuna good Puna, morning. how are you? Minister is here. Uh, I am blessed, thank you. I'm calling to talk to the Minister about leaks in second trace Mingot Road, high up on the mountain. Mm -hmm. So I'll take notes for you, Minister. Yeah, sure. Second trace Mingot, you said? Mingot Road. This yeah. is in Tunapuna? Mingot Road, high up on Mingot. the mountain there, where they have a leak, and they have more leaks lower down. They came two months back and fixed some leaks lower down. Okay. And now higher up have more leaks. All right, Tunapuna, anything else? So that's it for the minister. And to tell him a good and blessed and wonderful morning. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one, Tunapuna. I noted your complaints. I'll pass it on to the minister. Thank you so much. Yeah, Minister, and that was it, straight out the door. Yeah. Um, so you were talking about the fact that the um, transient population, so of you're course, talking they about, put yeah, so it's about 70,000 mm -hmm. citizens. And 70,000 citizens on your water network it can put a, a, a lot of strain. Yeah. And um, a number of guest houses <coughs> in Southwest Tobago would complain in, in Keenan, in, in, in Buku, in um, um, Crown Point, would normally complain every year yeah. that they are not getting water, they have to request water from the, the fire services, etc. And we recognize that you had two major problems. The coal and water treatment plant it needed to be upgraded to increase water production because that is the plant that channels water to southwest Tobago. So a number of wells were rehabilitated that to supplement the coal and water treatment plant. Coal and water treatment plant is a surface water. Easter time, dry season, yes. the water levels will drop. And I'm going to pause you again because yeah. we have Karanaj on the line. Karanaj, good morning. Good morning. Yes, I would like to ask the minister. I am calling from Seaview Gardens, Karanaj. Um, just up from the main road on a side street at the corner, there is a hydrant. Um, there are constant trucks, water trucks, filling up, many of them with numbers to call for water, which means I would assume that they are in a service to the public. They are making their own money off of water. Thing. We had had meetings a few years ago, and the gen, gen, then gentleman from Wasa was very helpful, and he told us, take pictures of any truck, send them in to him. He gave us a number at that time. And we were doing that, and it stopped. So he was effective. However, we had heard that he was transferred or, you know, a different job. And the situation has gotten even worse. Sometimes, or every day, all day, trucks come and fill up, fill up. 
sometimes two, three in line. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times people halfway up from Seaview Gardens can't get water because um, it's hilly up there. Um, what can be done? Is there anything that can be done? Could be done? Could you give us a number that we could call to complain? I had gone down once because he had told us to take pictures of the truck and send them in which we, all, we were doing, and I did. Um, but once when I was doing that, a truck driver got out his truck and ran up the road and threatened me, mm -hmm. pointed his finger at me and said, I'm marking you. If anything happen, I will find you. <laughs> After that, I folded up and I said, no, it's not worth my life or whatever would happen. Can you give us some information of what can be done? Can we complain to some department in Wasa when these trucks are coming constantly filling up while many of our Paying customers can't get water. Thank you. Thank you so much, Karanaj. Uh, Minister, gets a comment? Yeah. So, again, you have a member of the public confirming exactly what I put in the public domain mm -hmm. recently, as well as the, the chairman of the Water and Sewage Authority. I, because of the sensitivity of this um, problem, I will not venture to give the, the customer or the citizen any number that they can call. This requires a certain level of investigation and um, it means that we may possibly have to collaborate with the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service to um, undertake some kind of sting operation mm -hmm. where these activities are um, pervasive. Mm -hmm. So um, he has indicated the location and that is enough for me. I will speak to the management and um, my colleague at the Ministry of National Security to look and, and, and to do some kind of surveillance on some of the areas where the practice um, um, might be very, very pervasive. But this is just an example yeah. of what is actually happening. And he lives in Seaview Garden, you would have heard from him directly. When the fire hydrants are open mm -hmm. for water to be extracted to fill, to fill the, these, um, these, um, these trucks, Normally, what will happen is that you break down pressure yeah. Minister, on of course, your system. I know we have Tobago on the line. Tobago. <laughs> Tobago, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. I have a three and one questions for the minister. One, I'm calling from Tobago. Oh, yes. We are serviced by wells on that end. There are three. One is leading process, and two is locked off. We constantly get a low quality water, rusting our materials. It is said that um, one of the wells is pulling seawater. My information is that it's inferior quality pipe that has been used in the wells. Why can those pipes be changed to higher quality, maybe stainless steel? And why can't the three wells be connected so that when one of the pump is broken down, you can switch on the other? Why do we have to wait three and four days without water? And you have three wells, which are functional, but not connected. The other Tobago, one... Tobago, before you go, I know that you said two of the wells are locked off. Is it that only one is working at this time? <laughs> yes. Okay, got it. All right. And okay, you want to know if it can be changed or if the other two can also be in operation as well? Right, so that when the pump goes down, you could just switch the other one on. Okay, sure. Why do we have to wait four and five days for a pump to be fixed in that time we are forced to buy water pay for water on the other right. note of paying for water why can those people who their bills are up to date and still have to buy water can wasa recompensate us for those purchases i would like to have an answer please tobago thank you so much minister will address now thank you yeah, I, I was trying Minister, to get... So which one? The his, recompensation first or the two wells that he wants operational? The, the compensation, there's no compensation policy, unfortunately. Um, once your bills are up to date and there is a disruption, you are entitled to a free, free. truck bond supply. That is the policy. But oftentimes, because citizens may experience challenges in reaching the authority, their customer service center mm -hmm. to request a truck one supplier or sometimes the delay that they experience, most of them will go to other private operators to get their supply. But um, unfortunately, we don't have a policy where citizens would have opted to go to private suppliers 
to get their trouble and supply of water. Yeah. The policy is that the authority, once you're a customer, especially uh, where your bills are and your account is up to date, you are entitled to a, tree, a free trouble and supply of water. If you choose to go outside of that, yes. the policy does not um, cater for citizens who would have gone to or resorted to tr um, private operators to get their supply. With respect to the wells, um, I did not get the location. I believe it was Castara, Castara, Castara. Tobago. Yeah, no, but I can always confirm. Right. Yes. But yeah. you, you, wells are very sensitive things. Um, the operators at Wasa have to take the directors from the experts, the um, the geologists, and the from the water resources agency. In, in the way in which they operate the well, how much water is extracted or pumped out on a daily basis, because you remember it's an underground aquifer that must be monitored on a constant basis, because if you over extract water from that aquifer, you can have salt water intrusion where that well will no longer be in operation, maybe for years until it is fully recharged. When you have an area where a number of wells are located within close proximity, it is highly likely that this, all of these wells would be pointing to one aquifer. And if you over extract from other wells in the same area, you run the risk of that aquifer being damaged as a result of saltwater intrusion. And so, we have to pause here. Sure. And I know I have the information for Castara and all of our other callers, and I can guarantee that I'm going to be giving it to the minister. Yes. And I know that he will do his due diligence in time. Minister, Certainly. thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's always a pleasure when we have you here this morning. It was a pleasure also to open up the phone lines so that the public and the community can reach out to you. So thank you once thank again. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> and that was Appreciate the Minister it. of Public Utilities, Minister yeah. Marvin Gonzalez, just sharing a bit about what's happening at Wasa in Tobago. And he also fielded some of your calls. And I know that he will be looking into some of those issues and concerns concerns that were raised. You're on the Now Morning Show. We're going to take a break and be right back. Stay with us.